least threatening looking Mexican dude you've probably ever seen, huh? And you guys are like, oh, this guy definitely crossed legally, huh? Uh, especially with a name like Jerry, though, you know, hella whitewashed. Uh, but my, my actual name is Gerardo, though, you know? Um, so hella Mexican. People always ask me, Jerry, how come you don't go by your real name? Are you ashamed of being Mexican? No, nah, it's not that, you know, it's just a lot easier to just go by Jerry, you know, like one last syllable. It's all good. And I'm actually also a junior, you know, so that means my dad's name is also Gerardo. You know how it works. Um, and uh, my, my uncle fucked that up for me pretty early on in my life, you know. He's like, hey, cabrón, you know why your dad named you after, after him? I was like, yeah, I do, because I was the firstborn son and he loves me and shit. He's like, no, nah, no, nah. he told us that uh, he just really liked the way your mom yelled out his name during sex. And I was like, oh, wow, well, fuck. That's canceled. Thank you. I fucking hate it. Um, but he was, he was right though, you know, it's, it's a great name during sex. You know? It's like, ay, Gerardo, papi. As opposed, as opposed to, what the fuck was that, Jerry? It just doesn't have the same ring to it, you know? It doesn't have the same ring to it. But yeah, you know, they mentioned I'm coming out here from the Central Valley, a small rural town. Not like Yeehaw Rural, but more like we picked all your fruits and vegetables. Out there, it's like 98% of the Tino out there, man. Like, it looks like the migrant caravans fucking made it across out there, man. Like, um, we were so rural, like our drive-bys were on tractors, dude. Uh, you know, guys would come by, fucking shoot up the place on tractors. It sounds bad, but it wasn't that bad, you know? They're slow, gives you a lot of time to run and hide. And when you come out, you come out, you see the bullet holes, and you fucking notice they tilled your front yard, like, oh shit. You know, that's actually how I, that's actually how I got, uh, got started in, in gardening, you know, but that's here and here there. It's my first time out here in North Hollywood. Uh, it's good to be out here, but the city life is so different from the country life, man. You guys got that, uh, what do you guys call it? Fucking drinkable water? What? That's a fucking trip, man. Like, we can't drink our shit back home. There's like arsenic and pesticides and that shit. Like, you'll literally get cancer if you drink it. So imagine my face when they offered me some tap water backstage. I was like, what the fuck? This motherfucker's trying to kill me. You know? and then they explained it to me. He's like, nah, we got modern technology that filters out the water so it's safe to drink. It's like, okay, Mr. Fancy Pants. Throw some, throw some, throw some ice in that bitch and I'm good. Um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's so different out here, man. Like, I seen a couple billboards on my way down here. Your guys' weed is so accessible out here, man. Like, you guys got that delivery service now? That's pretty badass, I'm sure jealous of that, you know? Like, I don't know what kind of portal we go through over the grapevine going into the Central Valley, but it's like you're getting transported into little Texas, man. It's like super conservative, like they're super strict about everything. You can't come across weed out there, man. It's really hard to get. It. You know, they just need to get with the program and just make it accessible everywhere, you know? I'm sick of it, you know? Any weed smokers out here? Yeah. Yeah, man, like, you know what I'm not excited about is like the inevitable gentrification of weed, you know? Because you know it's only a matter of time before like rich white people are like tired of us and they just want to smoke their weed in peace. You know, like they're gonna come out, they're gonna come out with like the Napa Valley of weed, you know? And they're gonna be fucking pretentious about that shit, you know? Like, <coughs> oh, Carol, <coughs> this is good shit right here. Yeah, I, I detect some earthy tones in this, you know? Yes, girl, that's the tannins. Those are the tannins, you know? You hate to see it, man. I don't want to see that happen to weed, but it's gonna happen, man. Yeah, fuck, hold up, let me get some beer on, man. Get that cotton mouth up here, man. You guys got hella traffic out here? Yeah, we don't get that back home, you know? Unless there's like a cow crossing the road or you get stuck behind a slow tractor. You know, it's pretty smooth sailing out there. I will give you this though, you guys are badass at parking, man. Like I seen you guys squeeze into those fucking parallel parking, you guys fucking just get everywhere, man. Like that's that's just a skill we never developed out in the valley, man. There's no need for it. You know, it's like uh, you can leave your car in the middle of the road and it'll be fine. Man. You know, like you don't want to see me try to parallel park. I'm like a fucking Roomba car in the tight corner, like <laughs> just, you know, if I see a spot and it's not at least Two, two car lengths wide, like, I'm gonna keep it moving, man. I ain't making that. I ain't making that shit. Yeah, man, you guys gotta pay for parking out here? That's a trip, man, I've never seen that. Like, the first time I saw a parking meter, I was already a full-grown man, dude. I was like, what the fuck is this about? You know? 
the drive on the drive over here, I saw a couple of lots. I saw a couple of parking lots. Fifteen dollars an hour to park there, dude. What the fuck is that about, man? Like, I just tripped down and like these two empty pieces of land make more money than my farm worker parents back home, man. Like these two parking spots could have given me a better life, you know? They could have they could have probably they probably could have afforded to send me to college and shit, you know? Oh, Meanwhile, I got a fifteen dollar parking spot. Man, that's ridiculous. And some of y'all still were opposed to raising the minimum wage, man. Meanwhile, you got these fucking Lori Laughlin ass parking spots. <laughs> fucking crazy. I'm just, I'm just kidding, man. I love my parents. You know, we had it rough growing up, but you know, life turned out all right for me. I went to college, took out a couple of loans and shit, whatever. Um, doing this comedy thing now, it's going all right. You know, if anything, you know, I got my alma mater off my back. You know, they must have got word that I'm doing stand-up now because I haven't gotten a single fucking alumni donation card <laughs> in months, dude. This motherfucker's doing stand-up now? This motherfucker clearly has no money. Take him off the list. Take him off the list. <laughs> and they're right, man. I'm fucking broke. But that's not the only thing I got going on for me right now. I, uh, I recently started dating this amazing woman. She's sitting back there. She came, <laughs> thing. she came all the way down here to see me perform, you know. I always tell her, man, we're like a less glamorous Rocky Balboa and Adrian, you know. <laughs> Adrian, we did it, you know. She comes and watches my comedy shows. It's no boxing, but, you know, I still, I still slur my words because I usually get fucked up after these things. <laughs> but yeah, you know, we're pretty much uh, still in the honeymoon phase, so everything's going pretty great. Um, you know, we're reaching some big milestones. Like just the other day, I fucking let one rip, just farted around her for the first time ever. I was nerve wracking shit, and I was nervous, but she's still here. She's still here, so it's not good. You know? But it's got me worried about some of the other upcoming milestones, you know? Like, fuck, man, like how long should we be dating for? Until I let her see my dick soft, you know? <laughs> that's, that's a big step. Man, you gotta earn that shit. That's a lot of trust. Like, not everyone gets to see the old turtleneck in the natural habitat, you know? Man, you gotta build up to that shit. You know? <laughs> she ain't there yet. She ain't there yet. Like, it, took me, it took me years, years to fucking warm up to my doctor seeing me like that, you know? Like, every time I went for my annual checkup or whatever, I give myself a little whirl, get some blood flowing. Get some blood flowing down there. I'm going there with like a half chub. Oh, what's up, dog? We doing this or what? Uh, you know, I'm just hanging out. God, real? Where? Fuck. Oh. Uh, fuck. Yeah. I got that blood dick, you know. I'm a shower. I mean, I'm a grower, not a shower, you know. The blood that you gotta wait for it to fill up. It's not a meat dick, just ready to go, just like that. Um, but yeah, man, I'm pretty serious about her. You know, she's like, hey, can you like have babies and shit? I was like, I don't know, dude. I like drink and do drugs and shit. I might go get checked. So uh, I went in for a fertility test, and uh, you know, they literally just had me like beat off into a cup. I fucking I did it, and there's like a little bit, I was like, shh, I don't know, man. <laughs> so I gave it another go, and I came twice just to like improve my odds or whatever. <laughs> I come out, she's there, she's like, hey, what took you so long? You were there like for 15 minutes. I was like, oh, why should I go twice, man? Because the first one was like little droplets. It's like, oh! You went twice, huh? I thought you could only get it up once. What's all this about? <laughs> uh, dating's tough, dating's tough. Um, yeah, man. You know, I haven't, this is my first relationship in like five years, dude. So I forgot about some things, you know? Um, I'll leave you with this. Uh, you know, the freaking hanger, when they get hangry, that shit's real, man. Like, I'm like one skip of lunch from being single again, man. <laughs> and they're relentless when they're hungry. All right, I'm Jerry Tanoko, aka Gerardo Papichulo. That's all my time. Thank you.